Hey guys, as part of opening a shop, I had to go over certain numbers to see what the dangers of the shop would be. Now my shop is very secure because it is backed by a marketing agency. So if the employees, for instance, the shop goes poorly, the employees can just work at the marketing agency and hopefully learn marketing, uh, which is good. And we do have a lot of younger employees. I am the Otis at age 30. We also have another employee at 30, but everyone else is very, very young. Um, it's a fun place to work. But the number one thing I could see how a company goes under or how a game store goes under is unsold inventory, particularly Magic the Gathering boxes. There is one you probably expect me to say RTR because RTR you can get David Adams for seventy dollars, Gate Crash is under seventy, Dragon Maze is pennies, right? Like, you could light a Dragon Maze box on fire and it would probably give you more heat. It probably would be more valuable to you as a heat source than actual Magic cards. So yeah, let's talk about a really really bad set. So ABU Games has $45 Born of the Gods foreign Chinese sealed box. A lot of these Chinese sealed boxes are, I don't know what's going on, but they're very, very cheap. Uh, but even a Born of the Gods is $80 for free shipping. Now let me break that down to you. If a store buys it for $78.50, the free shipping is going to cost the store $6. And then they have to pay amount for eBay and possibly amount for PayPal, depends on how payment is structured. So if a store sells a box, which is very old, very old, Born of the Gods is not a new set in any definition. It is an old set, many years. So the store has dead inventory for several years and now it's selling it eighty dollars shipped, which if you take the six dollars away, let's say they do the six dollars shipping, which I think is how you should ship booster boxes, they're down to seventy four dollars. Then you take let's say ten percent in fees, which is actually low. Then they that would be uh, another eight dollars, so it would be sixty six dollars. Well, that kind of sucks since you bought it for seventy eight fifty. So you've lost $12.50 holding on to this box for many years. This is how you go bankrupt real fast. Uh, you have dead inventory that no one wants. And even in this model, the $85 buy now model, which is a slightly better box, $85. Let's do the same format where it's, let's for just ease, we'll say $6 shipping, $8 fees, well, now you're down to $71 and you pay $78.50 for the box. So you lost $7.50 holding on to this quote valuable product for a long time. And that's if someone wants to buy them, right? So here's, here's the math that isn't actually said. No one's buying this for $85, right? No one's buying this box for $85. That's just the current eBay price. And of course you can repack it and you, there's many interesting ways you could try to sell this product, but at the end of the day, you're not gonna get your 7850 after shipping. For you to hit 7850, you would need to sell you would need to 1450. Uh, let's add 1450, $6 shipping, 850 for the fees. You would need to sell it for looks like $89 with shipping. Do you think anyone's gonna buy a Born of the Gods for $89? And that's to break even, not including your cost of labor. If you throw in cost of labor of an employee and not pay them, I'm not gonna pay an employee below $14. I just don't believe in that. I don't believe someone can survive on less than $14. I know people are like, oh, well, I make less than that and I survive fine. Yes, but I would like it. I'm a big believer that if you give your employees a chance to move out of their parents' home, you know, like a lot of my employees, they start at their parents' home 
and eventually they make a paycheck and they can move out and they can move out to their, with their significant other they can move out to an apartment with a friend and that's why I like because once they're independent they tend to be more creative and not have a curfew which is good because our team in India is has to work at nighttime sometimes so yeah if I were to pay someone 14 50 an hour to like do this and it took that person half an hour to print the shipping to send it to the mail I mean yeah the mail can pick them up but let's assume we send it to the mail office uh, and we divide it by a number of boxes and stuff let's just assume it costs another two dollars to for a person's time to put in a box ship it and then address it correctly well you're, you're looking at 91 dollars but then you have overhead like the electric water the place you have to sell it you have someone to post it you have someone to manage the posting i mean 95 dollars is kind of what i assume the break even point is none of these boxes are 95 dollars none RTR, Gate Crash, Dragon Maze, Born of the God, Pharaoh's Journey into Nyx, Kaladas. And that assumes you can sell it to begin with, which you can't because you're competing as David Adams, TCG player, Card Kingdom, Channel Fireball, Star City Games, ABU Games. These people are going to destroy you in the marketplace for a booster box. And people were saying, oh, buy Magic Origins. It's such a great investment. <laughs> you know, I think of the business model, the only way I could see this being a okay business model is if you told people to buy the boxes for uh, 95 from you, and then once they, then they resell it to you for, let's say, 45 so I love Alpha Investments or Rudy's business model, right? He buys boxes from his subscribers for half off. So the model changes if you're not buying the box for $78.50. If you're buying the box for $50, then you make money. But you can. there's only one source that would sell you a box of $50. And that's someone who made a very big fail on investment in a box. They bought all these boxes hoping that they would journey to Knicks would not be $80 that one day it would be 200 and it failed and then now they need to liquidate it so they will sell it to Rudy or someone else for $40 at $40 you can make money from journey to Knicks because let's say 40 you add the four for eBay and then you add the six you can sell it for 50 yes you can sell journey to Knicks for $50 or $60 and make a $10 profit but that's the only way I can see that happening Otherwise, how does anyone make money from this? The math honestly doesn't add up. And you might think, oh, you're a local game star. You can sell from MSRP. No, there's no loyalty among game to your game star. There's none. Now, do I, ex I, I fully expect that the only reason anyone would ever buy from my website is I have the lowest price point or I have a unique product. And that's it. Now, my clients and other stuff, they're a little different, right? My friends, they tend to be lawyers, doctors, and Wall Street energy traders. So, yes, they can pay a little extra because they make more. But in the hard reality of what it is to survive as a local game store, I'm not going to hold events. I don't see the reason to do so. Um... Unless it's like a really, really, like, the only type of event I would hold is if it's a friend's birthday party and he just wants to play Magic. But holding events, the expected value of holding events, that's why, like, when I watch Rudy's videos, there's no one in the store. He's smart. He's very, very smart. Because having people in the store is very low expected value. And, I mean, it sounds wicked to say this. But it's the only way you can survive. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.